just one more game before we get started in West Coast Conference play, and things are still up in the air for the number 22 Gonzaga women's team. They're 8-2, they've beaten Louisville and Tennessee, but their bench is still a mash unit after the last two weeks. We'll see how they look this afternoon against a team that upset them in California a year ago, the UC Davis Aggies. So good to see you again with the great Amanda Smith. I'm Greg Talbot. Well, the Zags only dressed seven players earlier this week against Queens University from Charlotte. Turns out, Amanda, it didn't matter because Yvonne Ejim had the game of her life. Not only did she have a career-high 32 points, even more impressively, she shot 76% from the field. And I think it is such a luxury to have a player like Yvonne Ejim on your team for reasons like this, right? When you are down, when you don't have those primary scorers that you can go to, they're out, they're injured, they're sick. Hey, guess what? You've got Avon Ejim. I loved the strength that she played with against Queens University, really taking advantage of the size difference. So the Zags have Vani. UC Davis has Evan Turner, who's leading the Big West in scoring. She is definitely their biggest offensive contributor. She's a phenomenal shooter, like you just mentioned, Greg. She leads the Big West in points per game, averaging 19. If I'm Gonzaga, I know that defensively, we got to know where she is on the court at all times because the offense, it really kind of facilitates and runs through what she can do. 40 minutes of basketball this afternoon, and then BYU comes to town to start conference play. So let's get it going. Aggies and the Zags from Spokane next on the WCC Network on Stadium. Back here in Spokane on a lovely winter afternoon. Finals start tomorrow here at Gonzaga, so not a lot of students in the crowd inside the McCarthy Athletic Center. But elsewhere, you'll see here in a second, we have a pretty full house this afternoon, Amanda. This is great in here. It is packed. Yeah. It is like a sea of red in here right now. We'll show you in just a second as we get ready to show you this afternoon's starting lineups for UC Davis. One of the interesting things about them, Amanda, they have had the same starting five in all seven games they played this year. And we talked about it a little bit earlier, but really offensively, when we talk about contributors on that end of the floor, it's gonna come through Evan Turner. But yes, you have to know where everyone else is as well, because guess what? They're gonna be trying to get her the ball. No question. So Megan Norris, their leading rebounder. Megan Jones, second in the Big Sky Conference in blocks. So this is a team that spreads it around. Interesting for Gonzaga. Look on the right side of your screen. Eliza Hollingsworth finally back in the fold. She was sick. She is back. Callie Stokes also back in the equation today. So the Zags are back to dressing nine instead of seven. 
And that's huge. And it, it almost feels like, oh, what? It's just two more players. But two players in different game type situations, whether it be someone's in foul trouble, whether it be on the off chance, goodness, you never hope for it, but an injury. Having those extra players and a player like Eliza Hollingsworth, who is a primary scorer for this Gonzaga team, averaging 10 points a game, it's huge to have her not just back, but back in the starting lineup because it takes some of the pressure on the uh, offensive end on the inside away from Avon Ejum. Well, and better back sooner rather than later. That tends to be the case in pretty much every injury in every sport, especially knowing that this is really the end of non-conference play this afternoon. BYU is here next week, and then we're off and running. Absolutely. So I'm interested. Hollingsworth hasn't played since she played on November 28th. Yeah. So I'm interested to see kind of how she comes out, how she starts. But the biggest question is going to be how does she finish, right? There might be a little rust on at first, but it's all it's all the same once you get going. Well, it is loud this afternoon inside McCarthy Athletic Center. It's going to be Megan Norris and Ivan Ejim doing the honors here in front of a couple thousand people in the kennel. So fun. Egypt with a smile on her face as she steps into the circle. I told you it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> and up we go. It's basketball time in the kennel. And welcome back, Eliza Hollingsworth corralling the ball. So this is the end of non-conference play. As we know it this afternoon for Gonzaga, yes, Montana comes in for a one-off right before Christmas as Williams finds Ejim, goes up, no Hollingsworth, and man, very close. Flynn goes back to UC Davis. So yeah, there's that game against Montana coming up in a few weeks, but this is basically the end of non-league stuff, Amanda. They picked up some elite wins against Louisville and Tennessee, top 25. Some really good wins against Stephen F. Austin, Wyoming, Southern Utah, and their two losses have been good ones, especially Stanford. They also lost to Marquette. So, Amanda, is this program happy with the first six weeks as we come to an end of it? I would say you need to be, especially for the circumstance in which you've been playing. I think that if they had their full roster available, they might feel a little more comfortable heading into conference play with some of the system they've been able to put in and implement in practice. But goodness, that's what basketball is. I think the best teams are the ones that can adjust to what comes up. So yes, I don't, I don't know that they're exactly where they want to be at this point in the season, but that doesn't mean that they're not gonna get there. I think that's a good way to look at it is Burns squares up for a three and it won't go down and Brennan Maxwell the rebound. But again, considering the injuries, considering you beat Louisville when they were ranked, what, number four in the country? You beat Tennessee? I think you take that because Stanford's your one major loss and, and they're number two in the country. Absolutely. And Gonzaga, you know, ranked right now in the top 25, 22. So they are competitive. This is what you would expect a team that's ranked in that top 25 to be doing. I do think we're going to continue to see a little bit more consistency once they have that full kind of roster lineup available. Well, this is Turner stepping back for her first shot. It won't go down, and Kaylin strong with the rebound. Already in this game, I can see that the tempo is kind of being pushed a little bit more from Gonzaga's side as Brenna Maxwell knocks down that three. Brenna Maxwell now averaging 14 points a game on the year. That's second on the team. Amanda, that's really pretty amazing when you remember that she was a sixth man until, what, two weeks ago? And I think that, you know, you and I have talked about that's kind of what you expect from someone who has experienced the grad transfer on this team. Yes, she has been used to coming off the bench, but she did have a starting role in moments at Utah. And there she is again, the first six points for the Zags both off a couple of three-pointers to get him started after a slow first few minutes. And she had a more quiet offensive game against Queens. Those three-point shots are something that before anyone is in this gym, it's her and one of the staff from the women's basketball program working on those shots. She is working on those threes consistently. And as Trong brings it up, that is now 10 of 11 games this year already where Maxwell has multiple three-pointers. Hollingsworth, Eliza Hollingsworth. She'd been gone for a little while with a sickness. It was not an injury. Now she's back. And Amanda, what is having her back in the fold allow this team to do? Can they breathe a little bit easier? I think that that's a great way to put it because like I mentioned, it takes pressure off the other bigs on Gonzaga. So it's not just 
hey, defensively, we have to contain Avon Ejim. Now you have to rotate. You have to know where, if you remember early on in the game, it was Ejim to Hollingsworth. Granted, she missed that shot, but that's kind of the luxury that you have when you've got another big down low to go up against the pressure of UC Davis's post players. Okay, so Maxwell and Eliza Hollingsworth to the bench in for the Zags. Destiny Burton, and then over in the corner at the top of your screen is Callie Stokes, who is also back and available today after she was sick along with Hollingsworth. Here's Ejim, nice up and under, 32 last game, and her first two today. I think that this is where Gonzaga has a little bit of an advantage against UC Davis in that post position. They do have a couple six foot plus players on their team, but I feel like offensively strength wise, attack the paint once again. That is where they were so successful against Queens. Here goes Jones. Not a great pass, team wasn't looking for it. And here comes Trong looking to run. Williams underneath, off her hand. And this one will go back to the Aggies. Right now it's a 7-0 Gonzaga run though. All that momentum going the Bulldogs way. So Kaylin Trong, in case you weren't with us the last couple of games, might be wondering why she is running the point. Her sister, Kaylee, has a foot injury. She is out indefinitely. Nobody around the program knows for quite how long. The good news is Kaylin ran point for a couple of weeks last year when, when Kaylee was hurt a year ago. So this is an able point guard. It does change up the guard look, though, as Jones knocks down the deep jumper. That's a three, and it's back to a four-point game. I think Kaylin Strong has done a really good job of running the point guard position. Like yeah. you mentioned, it's not something that she is unfamiliar with, but if you are used to playing in that off ball position and then you're asked to be point guard, eh, it is kind of a little bit of an adjustment. Uh, I think she's done a phenomenal job in kind of accepting that role. Great dish there, cleared room for Ejim. Callie Stokes, welcome back from injury. Excellent Callie Stokes, nice jumper. That's a three. And one of the cool things about the first six weeks of this season, Amanda has been seeing Callie Stokes really get some legitimate playing time. I think we kind of expected that she and Peyton Muma might be relegated to pretty deep bench roles this year. That's not necessarily been the case, and we'll talk about that more on the other side of the break as the Zags are off and running 13 to 6, five minutes in on the WCC Network on Stadium. Well, welcome to Spokane. UC Davis Aggies, a pretty traditionally very strong program out of the Big West Conference. Uh, five straight Big West titles. However, Amanda, they're, they're a little bit down this year because of how many people they lost to graduation. Yeah, they lost about 50% of their team. So they are definitely in rebuild mode. We talked a lot about Evan Turner being the primary offensive contributor for this UC Davis team. 
they're going to need offensively others to step up. Right now, Turner averaging 19 points a game, no one else in double-digit range. So yes, they are in rebuild mode, but I think that their team looks different, and so does Gonzaga's team. No question. And one of the things that makes today's game so interesting is the fact that these teams, in case you at home don't know this, they played last year down in California as the three won't go from Sable. Put back, though, from Jones. She draws the foul, and she'll get two of the line. It was Stokes. These two teams played a year ago in California. Gonzaga favored in the top 25 a lot last year. Went down to Davis and lost 69-66. to Really, though, outside of the fact that they shot 40% as a team, which is not what you want if you're on Coach Fortier's team, more importantly, Amanda, the Zags shot one for 14 in the fourth quarter. They took their foot off the gas, and they lost. Yeah, they were outscored 19 to eight in that fourth quarter. Ugh. So obviously they come into this game, you always want to win, but I think when you have kind of a loss against an opponent, it is like almost coming into the game, you're like, absolutely not, not going to happen again. I think that there's just a lot that Gonzaga is still working on. Their team looks different. If you look at those box scores from last year, many of the players on both sides are no longer on the rosters. Destiny Burton, jump shot won't go, and a good rebound by Megan Jones, the 6'3 forward from Scotland. That is not one of the countries you usually hear foreign players coming from in D1 college basketball. A lot from the, leather, from the Netherlands. Zags have Mott Hybens and, and the like. A lot from Australia nowadays, as this one's going back the other way. Can't say I've ever heard of a player coming over from Scotland. Scotland, that's very cool. Peyton Muma checks in for the Zags as Tron goes to the bench, so we will see the point guard of the future for GU have a chance to run the offense. She's gotten many minutes, especially with yeah. the injuries and illness that Gonzaga has faced. Um, but I think that this is great for their team because what it does is it allows whenever Kaylee Trong is back right now, when Kaylin Trong needs a little bit of a break, it allows someone to come in and have experience playing this position. So all the pressure, once again, is not just on one player. Great move to the rim by Sable. The Penn State transfer, very good looking. She had 12 last game against St. Mary's. So back-to-back -back WCC games for these Aggies. A couple breakdowns defensively on the rotations from Gonzaga. Coming from Callie Stokes, she had the missed box out and then kind of was blown past on that last offensive opportunity from UC Davis. So I think more communication and just kind of rotating is going to help them. Ejim and Williams back in off the bench for GU after a great move there by Sable. If you watch the replay, though, right, you can see, yes, Kelly Stokes is beaten off that first step. Where's the help side D? Mm. And as Muma gets ready to inbound it, one of the interesting things about the times we live in coming off the back of COVID the last couple of years is now, there's a chance the Trong twins come back for another year. You never know. There is an opportunity for that, and I think that that is what's really fun about college athletics right now is who is going to come back? Yeah. Who is going, you know, who is younger and maybe does have an additional year once they get to be a senior? Um, there's just a lot of question marks. As for the Gonzaga roster, the only player who is not eligible for another year here in Spokane is Brenna Maxwell. But everyone else could come back. Both of the Trongs are regular non-red shirt, non-fifth year, non-grad seniors. So everybody except Maxwell could come back and considering coming into this year, Gonzaga was the runaway favorite to win the West Coast Conference, although that's still to be determined as we start it against BYU on Saturday. You never know. First missed three today by Maxwell as she runs down her own rebound. And that just, you know, if I'm looking at the Aggies, how was she able to shoot the three and then run and get her own rebound. Defensive breakdown on their end. Hollingsworth double teamed and a foul. <laughs> foul on Sanders. And as Hollingsworth comes to the line, the Gonzaga women second in the country as a team from the free throw line, 83%. I think I speak for everyone in Spokane when we say that we wish the men's team would do the same. What's that, the broadcaster's curse? That thing? Amanda. <laughs> you gonna be that guy to me today? I just today? gotta call you out. Come on. 
<laughs> Hits the back end. Go ahead. Like, I feel like that always happens. Yeah. It's a real thing. Is it? Yeah, I'm a superstitious person. Okay. <laughs> I believe in the hot hands. You're not just a little stitious? <laughs> That's superstitious. Just a little stitious. <sighs> Great kick to the corner for Sable again. This time she connects. What's interesting right now on UC Davis's side to me is they're having a great three-point shooting performance so far. 50% already knocked down three of their six opportunities from the perimeter coming into this game. It was Evan Turner who had 24 total made threes. The rest of the team combined had 24. So they have struggled on the perimeter so far this year, but in years past, that is where they've been really strong. That was a clean swat, no foul when Ejim went up. The 32 points she had against Queens, I, I, I'm aware that's amazing. The fact that she was 13 from 17 from the field, 76%. I think that's even more rare in college athletics as Baker gets the layup. It's efficient. Yeah. And that's where I kind of say that like having a player like her that's so well-rounded because, yes, many of that came from assists from her teammates, but also she had these opportunities where it was defensive pressure, something like this. You know, she's just there. You can count on her. You can rely on her. And having this kind of chemistry and connection from players on your team, you know, the assists to Egypt. We've been talking about this as long as we've been doing games this year. It, the, 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 the delay in the timing as she took that layup, I mean, that could have been blocked or knocked away two separate times. I'm sure we have that one on replay in a second, but I mean, that took delay and timing in midair. This was really something, watch that, excellent. But once again, you know, this is something that also, credit to Brenna Maxwell yeah. for finding her on that opportunity. She works on those movements as well. She's continually putting in the work prior to game situations. So then guess what? When a player is guarding you, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm, this is what I've been practicing. <laughs> sure. Well, this is Victoria Baker at the line. Transferred from UC Irvine last year. So UC to UC. And she ties it up at 16 with 45 seconds to go in the first. Quick little first quarter. I was actually just going to ask you if you felt like this has been a really fast first quarter. Not a lot of stoppage. No. And I think that on Gonzaga's side, they're really pushing the ball first. That is something that we didn't see them do against Queens. I'm not surprised by that. Knowing that they only had seven dressed, you can't really get out and run um, because, like, energy-wise, got to conserve it. Um, and I don't know that they're kind of physically – at where they want to be yet when it comes to conditioning, when it comes to pushing the ball, uh, getting those runs up and down the court. So now that they have nine, yes, a little bit more opportunity to try some of that. This is Tess Sussman checking in for UC Davis, a Harvard transfer. That is quite the change from Harvard to Davis, California. Yeah. Hollingsworth back in the fold, no. And a great rebound by the Harvard transfer. But a three second differential between the game clock and the shot clock. So Baker can run this down nearly as much as she wants to. That's up top to their leading scorer, Harris, nearly stolen away by Vani Ejim. Five to shoot. Turner contested three, no. Three on the clock, Baker runs it down. Time for a little jumper, no. And that is the end of the first quarter. Boy, did that fly by. And we got a good one, 16-16 between UC Davis and Gonzaga. Aggies upset GU last year, trying to do the same in Spokane. Second quarter after this on the WCC Network today on Stadium.
So Kaylee Trong and Bree Salenbein both there. Notably, not even on the bench today for Gonzaga. Uh, Maude Ibens, who is still out with a concussion protocol as far as we've been told, Amanda. So still three players out for GU. We just don't see Maude on the bench today. And we haven't seen Bree Salenbein dress so far All this year. season. Yeah. So typically we've seen an available 11 for Gonzaga. We're at nine in this one. In case you weren't following the team and you're a GU fan, Mott Hybens has not played since about Thanksgiving. A little before that, actually. It's been a couple of weeks. She took an elbow to the head, pretty serious concussion. Apparently, it left a bruise, which is really bad if it's a concussion, as you probably know. Stolen away. Here comes Turner back the other way. Great dish to Baker. Rejected. And here comes Williams, and the Zags want to run. Strong three. Not a bad look. Maxwell, the physical rebound. And the Zags are coming out hard to start the second quarter. Travel for Williams. You can already feel a little bit more urgency, I would say, on Gonzaga's end. Yes, this is a tied basketball game right now, but I think on the offensive end, the Zags could get out, push a little bit more, and that's exactly what we're seeing. Some defense kind of highlighting what we know they can do on that offensive side. So we just saw Michaela Williams on the screen a second ago uh, as she steals it away there. Michaela got tossed uh, a couple nights ago against Queens University from Charlotte. And considering the Zags only dressed seven players, do you think she got a talking to in the locker room after that game? To me, the situation in which and when that happened was very lucky because mm. they were up by almost 20 points. Fourth quarter. Late in the fourth quarter. I believe there was about like two minutes left. So Gonzaga, they were in a good position. If that would have happened at a different point in the game, let's think about the first quarter. Right. Right, where Queens was leading. Something like that happens. That's definitely a momentum shifter, especially when you're then down to six players. If you remember also in that game, Kaylin Trong checked out for a little bit, uh, unsure of what happened in that moment, but she had left and went back into the locker room, came back and was okay. But guess what? Then you're what, down to five. Right. So I think that there just has to be kind of an awareness in game type situations when you only have seven available. You really can't afford to lose any players for something like getting tossed. Certainly not at this point as Trong's shot will not go down. So let's talk a little bit about Kaylin Trong. The first couple of games when she took over at point guard for her injured sister as Williams nearly ripped that away from Norris. Of a jump ball going back GU's way. Trong will bring it across. Um, Kaylin Trong was still acting as the leading scorer. She dropped more than 20 against Stanford. I think she had 19 against Stephen F. Austin. But against Queens, I think she only scored something like four points. So she really, as she brings it across here, it seems like as she settles into the more of the point guard role, she's taking the, the floor general passing stuff more as the first priority. Yeah, I would agree with that. I also don't think that she had a great shooting night against Queens. She was yeah. one of eight from the floor uh, and 0 of 5 from three-point range. What a great move from Naya Epps, the freshman, into the game. Right now, UC Davis, too easy of access into that paint. We kind of saw that a little bit against Queens where we wanted to see more pressure on the defensive end, not allowing them to just kind of play on the inside as they would love to. Uh, knowing that UC Davis has struggled from shooting on the perimeter, yes, they've been hot since the first quarter, but I don't know if you look at their statistics and kind of their numbers from the past seven games that mm. they've played, that is not where they're strong. So they could have just had a really, really nice first quarter. I would like to see them continue to try to pressure and get them to shoot from the outside. But to circle back to your point about Kaylin Trong, yeah, just four points against Queens. The three games prior averaging 19 points per game. So definitely you see a drop off especially being in that point guard position. But I think also she just didn't have the kind of shooting night that she was looking for. So Aggies by one here a minute, a couple minutes into the second quarter. Back to Trong, looking to give the Zags the lead. Kind of thought she might go up and under there, huh? You know what? And I kind of thought Callie Stokes had great position if she would have just stepped in front of UC Davis's defender Sydney Burns on that one. She would have been right on that block. And then I was thinking like the no look pass, yeah, you know? Sure. They've done it. Williams 
Left her alone, and she makes him pay. Zags back in the lead. That's huge for her, because when we talk about players who maybe haven't necessarily had these outstanding points per game performances, Michaela Williams is someone that I think of, where she does have an effect, especially on the defensive end, as we've seen in this game. But offensive production from her is going to be huge moving forward, especially into conference play for the Zags. So there she is, number 24. I, I was actually going to ask you coming into the day, I have it on my note sheet here, Michaela Williams only averaging about six points a game. We know she can score more than that. Would it behoove the team to feed her a little bit more? Absolutely. And I think, you know, it's kind of a different role maybe for her this year. If you look at her numbers from last year, averaging 13 minutes mm -hmm. uh, this year, you know, she's playing in that 30 range so far, uh, especially when you look at the injuries and illness that this team has had. Um, she does have more opportunities, but it is kind of, I feel like, an adjustment if you're not used to playing those sorts of numbers, and especially with a group where maybe it's not the system that you started with at the beginning of the year. Hollingsworth draws the foul going up. And Megan Norris, the culprit there for the Aggies. Well, we started this game today in Spokane with a flurry of three-pointers and a lot of up and down movement, and it felt like we were gonna hit a high point total this afternoon. But I'd say since the first five minutes of the first quarter, this thing has really gotten a little sloppier. We're seeing not nearly as many made jump shots. Yeah, Gonzaga with that made free throw from Hollingsworth. They've scored six here in the second quarter. UC Davis just two. So it's a 6-0 run right now for the Zags. Strong getting ready to jump out on defense against the sophomore from Oregon, Sydney Burns. She drives, no foul on Hollingsworth, who's, Burns made an aggressive move. This is gonna stay with UC Davis. You can hear the boos from the crowd, yeah. but this is exactly what I was talking about. I think that you need to pressure her out farther and then just trust that defensive rotation because time after time right now, UC Davis, they're getting into the paint. This is where they've kind of been strong. Yeah so far in this game. They've been strong in the paint, also importantly for the Aggies. They've been strong off the bench, already well into double double digits in bench players scoring today. Yeah, 15 points off the bench for the Aggies. Epps out top, she made a great move to the rack a few minutes ago. Here comes Turner, she's been pretty quiet. And he jumped the rebound. Vonnie's still leading the team in scoring and rebounding. Turner scoreless so far in this game. She really will shoot from anywhere on the court, though, and I think it's going to be big as we, you know, continue on throughout this game that she starts to find some offensive rhythm because we know she is the primary offensive contributor for UC Davis. Credit to Gonzaga for kind of taking her out of what she wants to do. Not the first time we have seen that this year, actually. Gonzaga's defense has been very good at eliminating the primary score a lot of the time. Absolutely, and you have to be, you know, like this is just if you're looking at the scout for this game, you see that the offensive numbers averaging 19 points a game for Turner, there's no one even close to her offensively for that. So yeah, force the other players to step up. Granted, in this game they have. Jones had a good start to this game and a good jumper goes around and off. Both offenses slowing down. Zags with a two-score lead. Williams a little bit of space there against Sanders. Looks like Callie Stokes will come in on the next dead ball. See, I feel like, you know, give Ejim the ball. Look, she wants it. There is a little bit of a mismatch down low right now. Williams wants it too, and she's got it too. She's like, hello, please, I got this. Come on. She's having a really nice offensive game, something, you know, that I think is just going to be huge as they continue, like I said, going into conference play, having her be able to step up in these moments and score. That was a great dish from the Harvard transfer, Sussman. Back out to Jones, and they swing it. Great kick. Sanders had a good look at it, and Trung and Williams kind of got mixed up there. They both went after the rebound and slowed each other down. Oh, you're on my team. Never here, you take it. Sure. <laughs> I 
Down a little Hollingsworth. Boxing it out. And a two. Beautiful, beautiful up and under. That is kind of like, what do they say, textbook? Yeah. Put it on a video and, and show it to players who want to play in the post position. Speaking it starts with the positioning. Speaking of Gonzaga basketball and on video, so I, I know you are new to the Gonzaga basketball community, Amanda. Are you aware, as Sussman's jumper doesn't Where's go down, going? there is an old uh, Mark Few coaching uh, videotape oh, that really? you, you used to be able to buy where he would explain his, his flex <laughs> offensive system to you as Hollingsworth puts it down. No, I did not know we'll that. We'll That's find really that for fun. you. Yeah, I'm sure I, you can find that on eBay. I could definitely, you know, use some, some tips. Christmas gifts, stocking stuff. <laughs> yeah, stuff. always open to learning. <laughs> nice little run for the Zags midway through the second, and they lead by 11, and Eliza Hollingsworth finally back from her sickness, and boy, are they happy that she is back. Zags by 11 on the WCC Network on Stadium. So we mentioned Gonzaga's men's basketball team a second ago, and look who is in the house this afternoon. That is Gonzaga great J.P. Batista. You might remember him from the Adam Morrison era. Came back to Spokane this year to join Mark Hughes' men's basketball coaching staff. It has been wonderful to see him around Spokane, and there he is with his great family. You think he's got a copy of that video on hand, maybe? Do you think he needs the video? He was part <laughs> of the system. Maybe. <laughs> okay, so let's just, you know, get him to... To kind of put it into action. Cough it up. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. sure. yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, back on the floor with three minutes to go in the second quarter. The three is down from Michaela Sanders. And Amanda, they needed that because before that shot, the Aggies were one for nine from the field in the second quarter. Yeah, and I was going to say 0 of three from three-point range so far in the second. I think that defensively for Gonzaga, they've done a great job of pressuring the perimeter. What they haven't done is they've allowed these opportunities on the inside, but six of the Aggies' first quarter 16 points coming from that three-point range, so we've seen a dip, and I think that that's really where Gonzaga's been able to extend their lead. 15-3 yeah. to three run now over the past five minutes for the Zags. The last two is from Ivan Ejim. Give her six points on the afternoon after she had 32 against Queens last time out. Back to Sanders. They keep feeding the hot hand in the corner. And a strong rebound by Callie Stokes. Nice to see her getting some real playing time back from that sickness. Coming up on halftime, inside two minutes to go until that break. And after a hot start, Britta Maxwell, been a little quieter recently as she's in the corner, was looking for a pass and said, Vani will do it herself and go to the free throw line. I like the take from Yvonne Ejim. I think offensively, they weren't able to get into the system that they wanted. And if we look at the play as a whole, and I'm sure they'll see this on film, Destiny Burton went to go screen for Kaylin Trong and missed the screen. So you don't hit a player that really doesn't do anything for your offense. You have to be able to sit there and set. 
So I think, you know, with the shot clock kind of coming down a little bit, Avon Ejim, knowing that she has size right now, if you're looking on UC Davis's players, why not just take it straight at the bucket? Well, ever since we said pretty early in the broadcast today that Gonzaga is what second in the country in free throws, uh, they have not been stellar from the line today. They're five for eight. You said it. That's, oh, that's okay. on you. Let's blame no, me, Mandy. Let's teammates, we're teammates. Let's blame me. <laughs> really, really unselfish <laughs> team captain stuff from you today, huh? Yeah, you know, I'm just like a good. I'm holding you accountable like that. That's true. Yeah, it's leadership. Like a good team captain should. <laughs> that's right. All right, here comes Sanders. This game was tied at the end of the first quarter. The Zags out front by 11 now. Great move by Sable. She's been so good from inside five feet today. She draws the foul and she'll do the line. Outscoring the Aggies, Gonzaga is 16 to five. One three point shot coming in this quarter for UC Davis. You can just kind of feel the defensive pressure that Gonzaga has right now. But I think on the offensive end from the first quarter, they've really taken a dip in that shooting percentage. Into triple teamed coverage down low to Campbell Gray. That's almost that was a gutsy pass. Yeah, I was going to say nearly an impossible pass to make, especially when you have a player like Yvonne Ejim that you're going to turn around into. Yeah, and then Eliza Hollingsworth, who could also collapse in mm -hmm. on you. So here is Gray. She'll give it a second look after that pass. Out to Jones. Six foot three, and she hits from three. She's a good shooter for a forward. And I think that this is something that this UC Davis team hasn't really seen where Evan Turner, she's having a really quiet game, scoreless so far. So other players offensively for UC Davis having to step up. They haven't had that kind of contribution on the offensive end. 45 seconds to go in the half. A quick half, it feels like. It, it's been flying. Sanders there to collect, and she moves up the court. Can Jones do it again? She slows Almost down. Felt like that was a travel. Yeah, got trapped by Maxwell. Can Turner finally get on the board? Yes, and the bank's open. On Sunday, I wish. <laughs> Need to go cut a check today? <laughs> you yeah. going to Wells Fargo, <laughs> STCU? We have mobile banking oh nowadays, gosh, Mandy. That's Come actually on. true. Oh, my gosh, and I have a nickname. That's so exciting. Back to a five-point game. UC Davis has cut into this lead. Ten seconds and a half. Williams. Three to shoot. Got to get rid of it. Hollingsworth tipped away. No foul. And what a run for UC Davis. At the end of the first half, it was the Zags by 11. And as we go into the break, Bulldogs by five. Yeah, so no made field goals for Gonzaga in the last two and a half minutes of the quarter. A 6-0 run to give the Aggies a little momentum heading into the half. All right, halftime show is coming up next on the WCC Network on Stadium. Highlights, stats, more joking about banking after this.
Well, Gonzaga was up 11 with just a few minutes to go in the second quarter, but here we are at halftime in Spokane. Five-point lead for the number 22 Bulldogs, 32-27. to 27. Welcome back courtside with the great Amanda Smith. I'm Greg Talbot, and Amanda, what happened those last few minutes before the buzzer? I think that what is maybe also surprising to Gonzaga is the three-point shooting from UC Davis in this game. They are not known this year to be a great perimeter shooting team. They're averaging about like 28% yep. per game, uh, and they're almost you know upwards of 43 here so far. So I think, yes, continuing to pressure that perimeter on the defensive end and then not allowing those I think, personally, Gonzaga's allowing too much access into the paint uh, from the Aggies. So in case you weren't with us at the beginning of the broadcast, we did start by saying this is the last pretty much non-conference game. Montana comes in around Christmas, but really this is the end of the road. They have BYU and San Diego starting next Saturday. That BYU game will be on SWX. It'll be here on the WCC Network for the Toreros. And again, that one off against Montana. But then we're off and running. It happens really fast. Yes, and I think that if you're Gonzaga, maybe it's like a little too fast for what you were hoping for with kind of injury, with illness, players being out, coming back, just not having the consistency that at this point you would expect to have heading into conference play. So I think still some learning curves going on for this Gonzaga team. And normally that would be a terrifying way to start your women's basketball WCC schedule. However... BYU, we already knew, as you can see, as you look at the preseason poll, we already knew they were going to be somewhat on a down year. However, they're off to a four and six start. They're even potentially more down, Amanda, than we thought they were going to be. So that BYU game, maybe not the ultimate make or break that it has been in years past. I feel like there's like this competitiveness between the two programs. Oh, there is. It definitely feels there like is. a rivalry game, yeah. right? So even though BYU has struggled, maybe they're not having the season that everyone anticipated they would having that game. I just think as a player, there's something in you that's like, uh-uh. <laughs> Absolutely, you're not just going to come in and, and walk all over us. The other big surprises in the WCC non-conference road, USF 9-2. and two. Then again, those are not particularly impressive wins. St. Mary's 6-3, and three, not bad. Speaking of St. Mary's, you know, we haven't even really mentioned that UC Davis kind of coming off of this yep. little stretch playing against the WCC. Uh, so, you know, playing St. Mary's, playing Pacific, now Gonzaga. These are teams that they have adjusted to what they are able to offer. Uh, but Gonzaga, you know, they're really going to have to kind of pull away in this game. The Aggies not letting up. Yeah, second half's going to be a fight on the floor, too. Let's see if... GU can make a little space in the second half and kickbox their way out of a five-point lead. I like that. That was nice. Back on the WCC Network on Stadium.
32-27, Zags on top of UC Davis, and we thought this game would be pretty close. Again, D Davis won this game when they played a year ago down in California. It seemed like we were off to a pretty tight start. We were tied at the end of the first quarter. Zags were up 11 midway through the second. Late second quarter run by the Aggies has it back within five, and let's show you how it happened for UC Davis. Yeah, if you remember, it, it was like a 15-3 run for Gonzaga at one yeah, point. Yeah, just the three-point line for UC Davis is how they're staying in this game. Six for 14 from downtown. Megan Jones leading the way. She's got two of those threes. 28% three-point shooting is what Davis came into this game shooting. They're upwards of about 43% from the perimeter in this game. So I think for Gonzaga, continuing to pressure there, you know, I don't think that those shots are necessarily – like the shots you don't want them taking. If right. I'm defense, yeah, force them to keep shooting because we saw them struggle at the beginning of the second quarter, and that's really where Gonzaga was able to make their run on those missed three-point shots. But like you mentioned, a 6-0 run heading into the half for the Aggies. It's just continuing to build the momentum, but behind Eliza Hollingsworth, Gonzaga, they're in good shape. Yeah, Eliza's got 10 points for GU, the first game back from – her sickness the last couple of games. Both she and Callie Stokes are back, and all of a sudden, she's looking great. Ten points for Hollingsworth, seven for Ejim, six for Brenna Maxwell. Fast start for Brenna, nothing since early in the first quarter, though. And I think that that has kind of just been the adjustment defensively that UC Davis has been able to make. But I just want to point out the bench points. You mentioned them, 21 off the bench yeah. for UC Davis as opposed to three for Gonzaga. That's a huge number. Defensively, you got to have the adjustment on all players, not just the shooter turner. A lot of family-friendly fun here in Spokane today. This is one of the biggest crowds we have seen uh, in the kennel this year, man. I mean, it's not a sellout, but it feels like it's darn pretty close. It does. You have, like, I would say one of every, like, ten seats are open. There is a lot of people in here. With the exception of what you're looking at now, so smaller student sections. Like, no, yeah, it's because of the finals. It's finals week. <laughs> the kids are busy. Hopefully they're in the library and not Jack and Dan's. I would think they're in the library. Take a break. Come on over. Make it for the second half. It's going to be a good second half. Gonzaga 32, Aggies 27. And knowing that the Davis Aggies won this game last year, they are not going away. We'll take one last halftime break. Then we're back with the second half action on the WCC Network on Stadium.
Five-point game here at halftime. Snowy outside the McCarthy Athletic Center, but a nice full house inside this afternoon at the break. Gonzaga 32, UC Davis 27. Let's take a look at our halftime stats, Amanda, and see exactly how this happened. What's really surprising, when you take a look at the shooting percentage this afternoon for UC Davis, considerably lower than Gonzaga's 48 to 35, but obviously the way they made up for that, the three-pointers. Yeah, absolutely, and I think, you know, so much of that coming from bench play. Megan Jones coming in, having a phenomenal game for the Aggies. Moving here into the second half, I think if you're Gonzaga, you need to continue pressuring the perimeter, but you're not necessarily upset as long as they're getting contested shots from the outside. So the bottom of your screen there, Eliza Hollingsworth, 10 points. She's back in the fold. That's good news. The stunner for UC Davis, Evan Turner. She averages 19 points a game, leads the Big West in scoring. Her only shot that went down was a bang three at the end of the second quarter. Her lowest points this year she scored 11. So wow. three through one half is <laughs> like way below average for her, obviously, but it has been other players. I've talked a lot about, they're not getting a lot of offensive contribution from others on their team. Well, they are in this game. And I think it's huge when you look at one of six shooting from Turner. No question about it. If they can keep a lid on her the rest of the way, it's gonna be better odds that they can do this. So Eliza Hollingsworth leading the way, 10 points for GU. Are you a little surprised that Von Ejim is a little more quiet this afternoon after having 32 a couple days ago? Yes, only because I do think that there is an opportunity for her. She has a size advantage against UC Davis, mm. and I think that that just comes you know, from her strength and what she's able to do when she catches the ball in the high post. I'd love to see her kind of go a little bit one-on-one -on -one against some of their players like she did against Queens. She even did it a little bit in the first half with that kind yeah. of LaMarcus Aldridge elbow turnaround that she <laughs> loves to do. And then knowing that you have Hollingsworth right on your opposite side now, it does alleviate some of that pressure on you if their defense comes over help side and collapses. Well, the Aggies were trying to get Turner going with a early first couple seconds of the third quarter shot didn't go down here's Ejim trying to get going and one more for the leading score you think she was like I'm gonna take her one-on-one -on -one. you guys wanted to see that let's go I think she has a earpiece <laughs> in and she's listening to, to you Amanda yeah yeah mm -hmm. that's you know just the analyst in me yeah. but <laughs> a good first step <laughs> a quick first step which I think is really really impressive uh, considering, you know, she's a 6'1 forward playing in the post position to have that sort of speed against more of a 5'10 stretch post player from UC Davis, that's huge. It's a luxury. The Gonzaga bench right there looked like they were about to collectively lose their mind. <laughs> Coach Craig Fourier was waving his arms like some kind of crazy person. Uh, the, the whole bench really unhappy with that call. So it's going back to the Aggies. Strong, great steal, throws it off of Sussman. And it's going to stay with UC Davis. But good for Trong. That was aggressive. Yeah, and a, a smart play. Granted, it didn't go Gonzaga's way, but to try to get the ball to bounce off of UC Davis and head the opposite direction. So Sydney Burns back out there and working for the Aggies. She did not have a huge first half, but she seemed to be around the ball a lot. And here she goes, the sophomore from Oregon. Tipped away by Maxwell. Last second shot goes down from Mozzie Harris. It's a four-point game. The crowd is losing their minds because they could have sworn that shot went after the buzzer. Listen to that. You can hear the boos. The crowd wanted the shot clock violation. Williams. But once again, though, the perimeter shooting, it's, it's sticking right now. It's steady for UC Davis. Yeah, seven for 16 from downtown. Feet up. And Morris right there. Two-point game. Man, that's just a defensive breakdown on Gonzaga's side. That's just hustle, you know, not getting back and playing in transition. Brenda Maxwell had six early points, and there are her first points since like three minutes into the game. They need her back. That's a good sign. And I think that that's where she's really successful, and it is unique to have a player who can kind of do one or two combo moves and pull up with a defender in their face because her re release is so high and so quick. Yeah, there's Evan Turner. So she's 
trying to get going. Took an early three in the quarter, didn't go down. Now they find her down low, keeps it within a two-point game. They know that they've got to get her heated up. So right now it's a little back and forth on the offensive end. Yeah. I think it's going to be really important on either side, dependent on who's going to win this game, right? Who can kind of come up with stops, go on a little bit of a run themselves, put them in a position where they have some what of a cushion. That shot did not go from Caitlin Trong. Has not made a shot yet today, but the Harvard transfer, Tess Sussman, puts UC Davis back in the lead. Zags were up five at halftime are you surprised no time out there from the coaching staff a little bit you can kind of you know see that we're going to have a substitution in Callie Stokes coming in but I think at some point you have to trust your team let them play they know what they need to do sure great feet up again that was Joan or rather Morris Morris had the height advantage Swinging it around to Burns. Crowd's calling for travels. They won't get it. And Sussman's J won't go. To me right now, if you were to call a timeout, it would only be, be because there's breakdown on the defensive side. Sure. Offensively, I think they're running a pretty nice system. They're getting the looks that they want. That's going to be on Maxwell. Continue. But the momentum is clearly in this moment. All you see Davis, yeah. right? Now the ball heading back their way. Couple of subs coming in for the Aggies. Jones in off the bench. And it looks like, well, it looks like we're going to get a timeout, actually. It looks like someone's about to call that timeout. We will take that break here in Spokane. UC Davis, good run to start the third quarter. They lead by one on the WCC Network on Stadium. Okay, so when we left you, UC Davis was beating Gonzaga 37-36 to with 6.35 to go in the third quarter. However, the officials took a second look at this one from a few minutes ago and said that this three-pointer did not count for Mozzie Harris. And as you can see, there's zero on the shot clock. That ball's still very much in her hand, so they called that back, and the Zags are back in the lead. So 36 34 Yes. is the the score at the moment. That is how the math works. That, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm just, welcome. you know, processing. Sure. Yeah. I don't, like, I hate <laughs> using the word lucky. But really, right now, I think that the momentum is on the Aggie side. Oh, so completely. getting those yeah. points back, it, it's huge for Gonzaga taking back the lead because right now, I think offensively, UC Davis, they're, they're really feeling it, you know, and they're, they're not, I have a lot of respect for them not like shying away from the three-point shot where they have really struggled with this yeah. season, except for in this game where they're shooting 41%. UC Davis has been in the driver's seat of this game since like, what, three minutes to go in the second quarter? It's been a while. They really have. And I think that a lot of it is coming from Gonzaga, allowing them to kind of just like play how they want to play and the Aggies adjusting in game to the defensive pressure and what Gonzaga is showing. 
Maxwell trying to get hot, and she's back. And that's huge from Maxwell. You know, you kind of mentioned that she had more of a quiet second quarter after, you know, starting the game with Gonzaga's first six points. Three of five from the outside for Maxwell in this game. Turner trying to get her going and a good rebound by Esther Little. Making an impact in a few minutes here in the second half. And Maxwell again. Strong. Thought about it, but she's cold from the field today. And there is her first field goal. And look at this. They got a little bit of help on the score, and all of a sudden they're back to a seven-point lead. They were theoretically down a few minutes ago. Nice turnaround, air ball, each of the board. Trong's gonna run. Looking for a little, tripped up back the other way. She knew she traveled as soon as she caught the ball. Oh, look at the smile, she knew, yeah. Those few extra steps. But the momentum, right, kind of like shifting a little bit. You can feel it. Gonzaga, they're really looking to run and push the ball. All right, that'll take us to another break. Here on the WCC Network, Zags all of a sudden ahead and feeling some momentum, partially due to Brianna, Ma uh, Brianna Maxwell. First time in a while. We'll take a... Oh. Well, UC Davis temporarily had the lead just a few minutes ago, but at the under five media timeout here in the third quarter, Gonzaga's pulled back ahead, 41 to 34. Oh, make that 36, I guess, as Sable makes it happen again. She's been low key very good today for UC Davis, Amanda, especially considering nobody for the Aggies is in double figures. Everyone has less than 10 points. And I think that that's been really important for them without a high score in performance from Turner, a player who averages 19 a game, and she's been held to just five. Trong couldn't get the jumper to go, and an aggressive rebound by Turner. We have a foul on the play. It's on Ejim. So back to five, but now it's a five-point lead for Gonzaga as Maxwell goes to the bench. Even scoring in this quarter from both teams, nine apiece. In the second, if you remember, it was really mostly Gonzaga yeah. until the latter half of the second where the Aggies started to go on a little bit of a run. Here's Jones. She's been great, but threw it off the foot of Eliza Hollingsworth. Here goes Gray. Sable. Leave her open, it feels like she's gonna make you pay, but 
a bit long on that one. Trong thought about it, but pulls back. Remember, she's the point guard now, not the shooting guard. But I wouldn't mind that, honestly. Like, they could use that in this moment. Well, they they could use could. some yeah. energy. Yeah. Well, that's what she's so good at. She's nice. a shooter, but a passer, too, as she finds Callie Stokes. Great vision. Just the way that she was able to draw over two UC Davis defenders, kind of wait and have the patience. I think that that's like the key on that play. She had the patience to wait till both of them had focus on her, which left Stokes open on the cut to the basket. Good perimeter defense by Hollingsworth, and she squares up on Sanders. It's a charge, Zags ball. Look at the smile coming up from Callie. Good to have her back. So second time this quarter that the charge has been called. It came from Gonzaga last time. Now it's on UC Davis this time. You can feel like both teams, I think, have a sense of urgency right now. Yes. I would say in moments it has wavered on each side where it, it's been like this momentum shift. But with the score, what it is. Both sides just looking to extend that. Gonzaga is certain, because it happened a year ago, that UC Davis can win this game. A couple more shots, this game is tied. Gray. Had Harris. And he'll slow it down. No fast breaks for Gonzaga today. Two for UC Davis. These teams have really been playing in the half court because they've been chucking up threes as that one won't go from Sanders and it's out of bounds. And I think that that's maybe what has felt a little different on the offensive end. We've seen it against Queens now. It didn't start this way for Gonzaga mm -hmm. where they were looking to run and push and score quick in transition, but now they're playing a little bit more in the half court, yeah. which I think is exactly what UC Davis wants them to do. That's the best bet that they're going to have at the defending, especially those bigs that Gonzaga has like upon each end. Sure. But I still would like to see her kind of go one-on-one -on -one with some of these players. She's been successful in those moments. Williams nearly had it taken away and tend to shoot. Bonnie lost control. That was an elbow that went up there. Sanders gets up. Thankfully, she's okay. And Coach Gross for Davis is really not happy. A lot of dribbling, though, on that possession for Gonzaga. Oh, and when you dribble a lot, you're just allowing a defense to go with you. Sure. It's not forcing you to make a decision. And I think that that's what the pass does in an offense. It forces a defense to have to make a choice. Am I going to move with or am I going to stay? When you dribble, you just aren't able to follow. Off the ball foul on GU. Not sure I saw that, but we'll get a look at the replay. And yeah, Coach Fortier not happy either. Seven point differential. Egypt nearly had the steal, and now they're behind. Turner. Don't know where she was going with that pass. But Trong's looking to get to the bucket. Instead, she'll get to the free throw. No, a charge. Oh, the crowd's going to let him hear it on that one. This crowd in red today in Spokane has felt like they've been on the rotten end of a couple of those charge calls. I don't know. Watching the replay, she is out of that restricted area. Her feet are set. That would be the definition of a charge. Harris and Maxwell the rebound. See, look, it's like it's Kaylin wants to run and push, but there's no one running with her. No, this team is playing slow half-court basketball. That's an entry pass foul on defense by the Aggies. But it's almost like she has been down on the offensive end and then has to wait kind of for everyone else sure. to get down there and then set something up offensively. Well, she and her sister like to run. Considering they started the year with both of them on the floor, Kaylee and Kaylin playing the one and two together, I think right. it's easier to drag the team 
with you at your speed if it's both of you going up court as opposed to just one, right? Absolutely, and I think that too, right, exactly to your point, when you have someone running with you, you always have someone to kick to yeah. once that defense picks you up and it forces them to make a choice instead of saying, I cannot play one on five. Sure. Ejim. The free throws have been really suspect today for Gonzaga. Six for 11. Came into this game shooting 83. Well, what a great pass to a cutting Turner, and she'll get one more. A chance to make it a five-point game. This is the kind of offense, though, that UC Davis has been running throughout this entire game. They like a motion offense. Yeah. Those kind of like Princeton-like cuts, lots of back screens, lots of cutting to the basket and finding the opening. So defensively, anticipating that that is what they're looking for and then being able to rotate and adjust. So that's now eight points for Evan Turner. You said her season, ho uh, her season total was 11. Got to think she'll get there. Has another whole quarter to do so. If I'm Gonzaga, I'm worried about her just starting to take over in the fourth quarter, though, right? Absolutely, because that is just kind of like what an offensive-minded player does when they know they've got to score. That was Victoria Baker and another and one opportunity coming up. This one for the redshirt freshman from Texas. She's a player that staff for UC Davis has said is one of the fastest they've ever seen. And she brings this energy off the bench. We've talked a lot about the bench from this UC Davis team. They've been phenomenal in this game. 25 off the bench for them as opposed to Gonzaga's five. For those of us like me who are bad at math, that is over half their points. Luckily for GU, they miss a free throw, but it's still a three-point game. The Zags do have to put a shot up here. 10 second differential. Maxwell from three. That one goes down. Stokes ended up on the floor. So I guess Maxwell gets one more even though it wasn't on her? Let's take another look. It's a body blow to Callie Stokes. And she was signaling to the official after that shot, like, did the three count? Yeah. And they signaled yes. Yes. So now it looks like we're going to see Callie Stokes at the line. It so is So the Stokes, foul yeah. wasn't going to be an and one. No. So it's Callie Stokes at the free throw line because we're in the bonus now. Plenty of fouls here in the third quarter compared to the first half. And, yeah, here's Callie with five points. So an opportunity really for Gonzaga to kind of very quickly extend their lead. Which which had been down to just three. Exactly. Yeah. Big free throw. So on one possession, really, you have to think there's an opportunity for them to score five points. Yep. That's huge. Seven for 12 from th the free throw line. Seven for 13, but a great board by Maxwell. And now the Zags can hold for the end of the quarter. We have a dead ball. The official going to the scorer's table, although I don't know why. Davis is going to send Baker back in. It looks like they put more time on the clock. Yeah, we were at 15. Now we're back to 24. So she signaled that there should have been more time. And now the Zags do have to shoot with 10 on the shot clock. Trong screening for Maxwell. Got to get rid of it. Williams, five to shoot. Off the ball foul. Maxwell on the ground. And that was on Baker, who just came back into the game. And that might be her third foul. That is her third foul. Second, rather. My mistake. So there really hasn't been any play. And Gonzaga 
has an opportunity now to score six points Huge. with the missed free throw, second free throw from Callie Stokes. But there hasn't been any up and down. The ball has stayed on this side of the court for this entirety of this kind of scoring stretch for Gonzaga. All of a sudden, it's back to a nine-point lead for GU and one last shot in the quarter for UC Davis. She's met by Little. Three to shoot. Got to get rid of it. Their leading scorer, Turner, no. What a weird third quarter. Gonzaga 50, UC Davis 41. That was down to a three-point game, and it looked like for a second UC Davis had the lead. As we go to the fourth, anything can happen. UC Davis beat Gonzaga this way last year. We'll see what happens next on the WCC Network on Stadium. Boy, that was a really weird third quarter compared to the first half of action this afternoon in Spokane. Last 10 minutes on the clock, Gonzaga 50, UC Davis 41. Amanda Smith, that was such a weird last couple minutes of the third quarter. It was down to a three-point game, then between threes and fouls and turnovers and stuff, Gonzaga just all of a sudden is back to a nine-point lead. How did that happen? So if we break it down a little bit, it started to me right here where Brenna Maxwell made the three-point shot. The foul, though, was on Callie Stokes, so that sent her to the free throw line. The ball stayed on this side of the court almost for the remainder of the third quarter. Gonzaga, they went on a 6-0 run during that stretch, but it was like Maxwell's three as she knocks down another, and then free throws. Yeah. That was a huge three right there for Brenna Maxwell. It's back to a 12-point game. And this is worth reiterating for those of you in the audience who, oh boy, an end one coming for Norris. That was huge. This is worth reiterating. A year ago, Gonzaga had UC Davis against the ropes. Then in the fourth quarter, they shot one for 14 from the field, and Davis came back to win 69 to 66. This could happen again, Amanda. Absolutely. It's been a really back and forth game throughout four quarters. And I just, I think it's like worth mentioning again, when we look at how the third quarter ended, had Gonzaga not scored six straight from the three and then the free throws, where the ball really was never like in action. Right. They would have only scored 12 in that quarter as opposed to the 18 that they did. That's and a huge difference when we talk yeah. about the end of a basketball game. And it's a very different game now. Absolutely. So Peyton Muma running the offense for the Zags. Kaylin Trong, Michaela Williams, and Ivan Ejim all on the bench. So three of the most effective players today, minus Hollingsworth and Maxwell, getting a good breather here. So they want a lot of their scores back out there for the home stretch. Here's Gray. A beautiful no-look righty. Wow. That's tough. That's a tough shot. But she didn't kind of waver. She used 
that sway of her body to hold it with her as long as she could. And then it was almost like a little finger roll from a stretched out position that, in the post. And she was so off balance, yeah. too, as she went up with less and less angle as she floated through the air. And it's back to an eight-point game. Here's Muma looking to distribute to Hollingsworth. A little hard and little the good rebound. Second chance for Liza. No. And you can see UC Davis head coach Jen Brown signaling let's go. She wants her team, or excuse me, Jennifer Gross. She wants her team to push, push, push. There she is, one more win. Would make her second on the all-time wins list in program history. Living legend down there in Davis. 12th year at the helm. Yeah, she's had a, a phenomenal career there. Started her career as a player at UC Davis, then an assistant to an associate and now head coach. Hollingsworth had a little space. Little hesitates and kicks. Good movement on this possession. Five to shoot. Back to Williams. And a good rebound by Harris. Boy, Coach Gross is going crazy on the sideline for Davis. Very animated. A contested three. Don't know if she's happy with that shot. Still an eight-point lead for GU. Stokes. Oh, nice little turnaround. That was quick. Great play, great entry pass. Callie Stokes has really been hanging out on that left block this entire game. Charge. One finally goes back Gonzaga's way on that equation. Evan Turner is ticked for UC Davis. And it feels contentious on the floor right now. There's an energy, there's an urgency, specifically from the Aggie side. Yeah. You can see Turner kind of leading the way for her team. They feel it slipping away. Just a hair over seven minutes left. Trong, they needed her to get going, and that's what they needed. 13-point like, lead. Like the, the kiss on the hands up to the sky for Trong after that three. Sure. That was huge. Davis wants a timeout. They feel it slipping away. Listen to this crowd in Spokane. They smell blood in the water. And it's not just the red shirts everyone's wearing today. Gonzaga 58, UC Davis 45 as we head down the home stretch on the WCC Network on Stadium. Man, it felt like there were a couple of times in the second half, Amanda Smith, where UC Davis was going to upset the Zags for the second year in a row. But as we welcome you back to the kennel, it's a 13-point lead for GU with seven minutes to go. It's not done yet, but it feels like it's close. Still seven minutes. 
this is not kind of the first position that UC Davis has been in in this game. In the second quarter, the momentum was completely leaning Gonzaga's way, yeah. and they ended on a really, really hot stretch. So if you're Gonzaga, you have to finish. If you're UC Davis, what you didn't do was finish against St. Mary's. So coming into this fourth quarter, can you close a game? Now, if you're a Zags fan, you might notice as Morris goes up and she'll get an and one, that this is not exactly the lineup you might think that the Zags would ha have out there as we head down the home stretch. You might notice that Avon Ejim is missing. Vani has four fouls. Which, right, seven minutes, 646 to be like so specific, is a really, really long time in the game of basketball. Yep. Right? Three points right there cut slowly back in to this Gonzaga lead. I don't think that they're going to go away, and they're not going to go away quietly. So if you're Gonzaga, how do you finish? How do you extend? I think you go straight at the bucket. It's right now I feel like the momentum's coming from Kaylin Trong. After that last three right before the break. Absolutely. No question. Outside to Trong. Good little screen from Esther Little. Going back the other way. Abandons the possession. Mm. So this but thing's doing, not done. Yeah, but doing exactly what we just thought that she would, yep. right? Like Aggressive. Exactly. Offensive-minded. Yes, she's running the point in this game, but you need to continue to build and build against a team that is just not going to, to let up on you. Great cross-court pass. Morris, another and one coming. This thing is not done in Spokane. So... In less than a minute, a chance for UC Davis to score six points. 6-0 run. Yeah. yeah. This is what we saw for Gonzaga at the end of the third quarter. These, like, short, short bursts of a lot of scoring. That might be a big missed free throw by the time this is all said and done. This is Mozzie Harris, the six foot two forward guarding, guarding Kaylin Trong. And it wasn't a matchup. They assigned her to guard her. Why is that? I think she's looking for a screen. Use it. She does. There you go. You could kind of see her signaling that she wanted the screen. I think when you say, why, why was she guarding Kaylin Trong? If I'm Kaylin Trong, I know that I have the speed on her. Well, to get by her. Absolutely, for sure. right? So screen. signaling to your teammate, hey, I, ne I need something here. Stokes on the other end. They have this game back in contention, UC Davis. That's All of huge. a sudden, nice little run for GU. And back to a 12 point game, erasing that cut in that UC Davis had just made. Zag ball. And I think that they're going to try to be aggressive on Egypt knowing that she has four fouls. So you could kind of see them looking to get the entry pass in. Who's guarding? <laughs> it's Egypt. She's got to be real smart here down the stretch. So Callie Stokes head to the bench. Ten points her first game back from sickness. Welcome back Callie Stokes. Strong. There was a physical screen and a big foul by Baker. Owie. Almost the exact same play, though. I was just going to say. From the possession before. Yeah. So wanting to go one-on-one. -on -one, and then I appreciate a player who, if no one picks you up, just pulls up and shoots it. Team 10 for 16 from the free throw line today. Not what they want, but at least they're going down late. Fourteen point lead. Ten points for Kaylin Trong in this game. Coming off a four point performance against Queens. This is what they need from her. Tell me if I'm wrong. Fourteen is the biggest lead of the game so far. How did that happen in the last five minutes? Well, back to 12. Nice move by Gray, but I believe 14 was the biggest lead. It feels like it started with Kaylin Trong. It started after her three. Then she called for the screen. She wanted it. Then she gets another opportunity at a little mid-range jumper. Goes to the free throw line. Callie Stokes with the defensive play. It's like 
they have a sense of urgency in this moment at the end of the game in the fourth quarter where you talk about what happened last year. I don't think they want history to repeat. No. You know what's really fun to watch this team, though, is even with, right, even with Mott Hybens out and Salenbein injured since the beginning of the year and now Kaylee Trong out, this team pretty clearly still knows who they are yeah. and what role everyone is playing. I always say, this is something I always say, that the best teams are just steady. So you can be down. You can be down by 10. You can be down by 12. And you just have steadiness to you. That, like, we know who we are. We know we can come back. Granted, they haven't had to fight from that far down in this game. But they do. They have, you know, a sort of identity to them. They do. Part of that identity is the fact that they spread the ball out. Five zags in double figures with just 65 points as a team. Hollingsworth, 10. Trong, 10. Ejim, 10. Maxwell, 19. Stokes, 10. So, right, if you're the opponent, you can't just say, all right, let's stop one to two players. Right. You have to guard the whole team. Hollingsworth. Zags by 13. That felt like a big shot. I'm loving the energy right now from Kaylin Trong. I feel like this stretch of play is behind their senior. Gonzaga 67, UC Davis 54. That was a huge possession. Give Hollingsworth 13 and two for four from downtown. Boy, do they need her back. Five of their last six shots. Clutch when it matters. Listen to that band, they're blasting out Mr. Brightside. It is a full house tonight. <laughs> Inside the McCarthy Athletic Center. I'll tell you, if you've never been here for a women's game, it is so fun, because everyone's just so happy to be here. It's hard to get tickets to men's games, man. Everyone is in a great mood when they're in here. The team's playing well. It's a Sunday afternoon party in Spokane. Love it. Like, come out and see one of the best teams in the country, right? Yep. Like a top 25? Yep. Ranked right now 22 in the nation. I think that this is why. It's closing to me. Closing without your full roster. Huge. That's huge because we've kind of seen these like last game a 20 point win. Yep. Right like against an opponent who was competitive. I think that Queens played a great game but Gonzaga they came out and eventually just did what we know them to do which is put the game away. Here UC Davis has really challenged them in moments to come back. And you can tell they're going to challenge them to the very end. It's Norris again. She's been so good from down low. That's off the hands of Yvonne Ejim. And Davis Ball. Again, Ejim's got four fouls. And this will be the Oregonian, Campbell Gray, to inbound. Turner's really tried to get going in the second half. She averages 19 a game. Maxwell on the steal. And boy, has Brenna been a revelation tonight. 19 points. Seven rebounds, strong, you bet. That feels like the ball game right there. Zags by 16, that is the biggest lead of the night. Coming off a performance where she was 0 of 5 from three point range against Queens. Here, I would say specifically in the fourth quarter, it has been Kaylin Strong leading the energy charge for Gonzaga. And she's been finishing. Yeah the way they did not do a year ago. And I think that that's just what you get from experience, right? So at the end of the day, yes, she's playing in the point guard position. So your leader, the one who's running the floor, the senior on your team, stepping up, knocking down shots when she needs to, and just like leading the way for Gonzaga to continue to pull away. Gonzaga six for eight from three in the second half. Massive. 
Sanders has been very good today for Davis. Feed to Norris. They love that play. She's had a couple and ones off of it, but this will just be two. They have really gotten a look on that specific play time and time again. I'm glad that you brought it up because, yes, we're at a point now where Gonzaga, they have, you know, a pretty – comfortable lead yeah. with about 215 left but that play that little roll to the basket has been something that Gonzaga has not defended well this game they have not rotated they've gotten an open look down on the block and a foul nearly almost every time by the way that was foul number five on Avon Ejim so gets a standing ovation as she comes out but she still comes out Boy, this has been fun this afternoon. And it has kind of been, like, don't count out UC Davis just yet because it has been these, like, spurts of, of runs. They missed a couple of clutch free throws in the yeah. second half. And Kaylin's going to take her time here across the timeline. Same play to Hollingsworth. Different result, but a good-looking jumper. Sanders. No. Good rebound by Williams. I don't know that that was the best shot for UC Davis to take. You don't need to be rushed offensively. You just need the three to go down. Absolutely. Right, so an off-balance three, not necessarily the shot you're looking for when you're trying to cut into a lead. Michaela Williams... Offensive foul, looked like, and a timeout on the floor. Zags up 70 to 55 with 134 to go. Well, conference play. Next weekend, BYU comes to town. Does this team look ready to you, Amanda? I think what is promising about how Gonzaga looks right now is that I don't think that this has been their best played game this no, year. No. I don't think that they have been as clean as we would expect them to, but that being said, to me it comes down to can you close? Yeah. And in the fourth quarter, they've really, really started to pull away. So there's the upcoming schedule. BYU San Diego, that's next Saturday and Monday. Kind of a weird one. Then Montana in for technically the last non conference game. Then we're off and running. We will see you after the new year, after that weekender against BYU in San Diego. Strong. Aggressive defense by Sussman. She'll send Kaitlyn to the line. A lot more fouls in the second half than we saw in the first, huh? Yeah, if you remember, you know, we kind of talked about the fast pace of yeah. the first half. It felt like it It really just blew by. Close up defense by Sydney Burns. So as the reigning West Coast Conference preseason poll favorites and knowing that both Portland and BYU are not fully red hot right now. As we get into the meat of the WCC schedule starting next weekend, you gotta think the Zags are gonna be the favorites in pretty much every game they play from here on in until they get to March. Hollingsworth to the bench. And Trong hits the free throw. The only thing at this point that would really help them more than anything else is getting fully healthy. And Maude Hybins will eventually be back from that concussion protocol that was apparently pretty nasty. But, but the big question mark the rest of the yeah. way is going to be Kaylee Trong. And I think that to build on what you're saying, though, when I use the word promising, it's because they don't have their full available roster. And they were able to, specifically in the fourth quarter, extend this lead and really, you know, make it difficult for UC Davis to chip away. They did, and that looked pretty painful for Callie Stokes. She got up grimacing from the ground right there. Kaitlyn Trong to the bench. What a game. 15 points, 
15 late points, by the way. Much better coming in the second half. Yeah, wasn't it all pretty much all second half for her? It really felt like the majority coming here in the fourth quarter. I think that she, like I mentioned, seriously kind of led this energy spurt from Gonzaga. Mm -hmm. Free throws have still been an issue tonight. 14 for 21 as a team. That's not going to cut it. Sable's been impressive. Feels like it's about time to start running this clock down and put it away. For the way this game ended, I don't think it tells the full story. I think it's really impressive what Gonzaga was able to do, how they were able to pull away in the fourth quarter yeah. against a UC Davis team who would not go away. Really competitive the whole way. Five to shoot, just got to get rid of it. Stokes, what a game she had, man. She's not going to be our player of the game in the postgame show in a second, but she certainly made a point of it. I think that I'll, you know, a few players could have potentially, for what they were able to do in this game, be the player of the game. Gonzaga 73, UC Davis 55 in some revenge from last year. Five Bulldogs in double figures. Exactly the kind of effort that Coach Lisa Fortier wanted out of this team coming into this year. And I, like I said, don't think that this has been Gonzaga's most clean played game. There was a lot of defensive breakdowns, turnovers, missed opportunities on the offensive end, fouls. That being said, the fact that they were able to not just close, but close the way they did behind their senior, behind a leader, Kaylin Trong kind of leading the way down the final stretch is so promising and impressive moving into conference play. Brenna Maxwell is our player of the game today. No doubt about it. Started off pretty hot, then went cold for a long time. And then the second half makes it her own. 19 total points, six for eight from the field, five for seven from downtown. Another efficient offensive player on this Gonzaga basketball team. 13 points for her coming in the second half. I think that it's just such a luxury to have a player that you can go to and not just one scorer on this team. Right. Having others step up in moments when, you know, a player like Avon Ejim goes a little quiet. And in a less competitive game, you know, Peyton Muma could have scored tonight. Uh, Destiny Burton capable of scoring. Esther Little as well. So everyone on this team capable of scoring, but boy, the spread out effort was really something tonight. Gonzaga, the three pointers, helped put it away in the second half. That was huge. I do want to give credit to UC Davis. I think that they did a phenomenal job on the offensive end. 29 bench points for them, 42% yeah. shooting, seven of 24 from the perimeter. They started out really, really hot from the three point line, but you and I said, force them to keep shooting from there. Eventually they got cold. BYU next weekend, what do we think? I think that heading into that game, it'll be interesting to see, you know, is Maude Hybens back? Mm. We haven't had an update on if she will be or not, but that is always a rivalry between these two teams. So granted, BYU is maybe not where fans thought they would be at this point. I think it's just gonna be a competitive game. You know, like those rivalry games are just something different. Well, finals week starts tomorrow here in Spokane. Get your studying done. Come on back on Saturday. Big rivalry game. BYU Gonzaga on SWX here in the kennel and then San Diego next Monday. For the great Amanda Smith and the rest of our WCC Network broadcast crew, I'm Greg Talbot saying thank you so much for joining us. Ends up being a big win for the Zags on Stadium. <laughs>